And now for the most controversial one of all. That's gonna be What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Fearless and today we are going over Ableton 12's MIDI transformation tools. There's a couple of these that I'm really excited about and a couple of them that I also think could be improved or worked upon. But regardless, this is a huge update for Ableton and it changes the game. So without any further introduction, let's jump right into the video. All right, guys, so before we jump into our MIDI clip, it's going to be very important that everyone turns their scale awareness on. So all you have to do is click this little button if it's not highlighted already, and then go ahead and pick the scale that your beat is in. And the reason that this is important is because a lot of these tools that we're going to take a look at are based off the scale. We're going to be using scale degrees. They abbreviate it as SD, and scale degrees, you can think of it almost like semitones, but every single semitone is in the scale. Every degree you go up will always be in your scale. The second thing you need to do is once you're inside of the MIDI note here, let's open this up. The tools aren't going to be available to you. Like they're all going to be deactivated. Like you can see right here, everything's grayed out. So what you're going to have to do for these tools to actually work is have some sort of MIDI going on. And you want that MIDI note to be selected because the difference between the transformation tools here and the generative tools here, these are going to allow you to generate MIDI. And these transformations are going to allow you to take MIDI that you might already have and then transform it from there. So before we jump into arpeggiate, which is our first tool, here let's look at some of these global controls because there's a couple of buttons that pop up on every single one of these the reset button right here the apply button and the transform button so what the reset button does is after you apply all of these effects blah 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 let's say you want to reset everything to the default values you can then go ahead and click this reset button and it's going to reset it to the default values it's not going to take you back to that one note that we just had that would be cool if it did that though wouldn't it but you can go ahead and press Control z and get back and then on the opposite side we have apply over here and this apply button takes all the parameters that you've set here and applies it to the MIDI notes that you have selected if we go ahead and select this and we press apply it's going to go ahead and apply everything that we have here and you might be asking well if you're going here and you're tweaking everything why would you need to apply it then later well there's a couple reasons the first reason is maybe you have other MIDI notes over here and you want to apply the same effects to them right there the other reason might be that you don't have transform on and that's what we're taking a look at next so when you have transform on it's going to update everything in real time as your effect it otherwise if transform is off it's not going to do that if i turn transform off now we can go ahead and mess with everything and it's not going to do it until we click the apply button those were the global controls let's jump into these individual transformations so for this example i'm just going to have some bass notes we're just layering three octaves and we're going to start with arpeggiate so first let's get a note that we want arpeggiate so i'm thinking let's go ahead and extend this all the way out here Arpeggiate is going to look very similar to the MIDI plugin that Ableton has, except this one can update in real time if you have transform on. So we have our style, which determines the sequence. We want it to go up in notes and then down, up and down or any version thereof. You have your steps, which is how many notes. And we have our distance, which is in scale degrees right here. And it's going to give us our spread of how many notes is going to be spread out in between them. Let's hear what we got so far. Maybe let's put the gate up. So the gate's going to control the length of the notes. So if you want it to be more of a staccato, you can turn it down a little bit like this and it'll be more plucky. Let's go up to three steps. So it gets a little crazy up there. And of course, your distance is going to have a lot to do with that as well. That's pretty fire. Let's jump over to connect now. And what connect is going to do is fill empty gaps in between notes in different ways. So for this to work, we have to have a couple notes with gaps, right? So let's uh let's just put a couple random notes in here. Let's select all of these and give it a shot. So first we have the spread in scale degrees. How many notes you want to be in the spread? Let's uh let's just start messing with this a little bit. Density is going to determine how many notes are going to be used between the gaps. As we turn this up, it's going to populate more notes. And rate is going to decide the length of each note. So I'm glad that they put this grid out option which is all the way at the bottom so you can snap it to the grid that makes it really intuitive for people that like to use the adaptive grids for instance but you can also turn this up and yeah let's uh play with that it's gonna get crazy here real fast wow and then we have tie here which is interesting it's gonna give us a probability for the notes extending all the way or not so let's turn this up and see exactly what i'm saying 
Yeah, there you go. So this one ended up extending the full way instead of splitting it into multiple notes. And what I've noticed is that some of these will allow you to apply the effects over and over again and give you different values. Probably the some that have like probabilities and things like that are going to allow you to do that. Some of these won't. It's going to keep it the same even if you click it over and over. But enough with the connect. Let's jump into ornament. Ornament has two options. You have flam or grace notes. And you can think of flam as just being one note that's included and grace notes can be several. But let's look at flam first. So what it's going to do is it's going to add a note in front of the note that you had highlighted. And you can go ahead and affect its position here. And you can affect the velocity if you'd like to do that as well. So you get the gist, you know, nothing too crazy, but let's switch over to grace notes because we can get a little more detailed with that. And as you can see, boom, it kicked in right away. So we have low, same or high for our pitch selection. You also have a position. So where it's going to be positioned, very similar to the position on flam. You have your velocity level as well. You have a chance level as well. And I'm guessing that's going to affect our chance lane if we go ahead and open that up. Yeah, you can see the value going up and down as we move it. And then we can set the amount of grace notes. So that's the biggest difference here. Obviously, we have a couple different controls, but let's zoom in here a little bit more. This is really going to depend on your grid. So you can see as we zoomed in, it made the grace notes even smaller. So if we zoom back out and then we mess with any of these values again, you can see it's going to snap to that grid where it's at. What you can do is if you're in adaptive grid, it might be better just to leave this in a certain fixed of grid. So maybe eight. And then that way, if you want to zoom in and get a closer look, it's not going to change as you do that. The next one is quantize. This is the craziest one. Not really, but it definitely can be useful in some situations. So I was thinking that this might be really dope if you were someone that plays live MIDI. If you're playing live MIDI, you might want an easy way to just quantize the MIDI notes really fast. And this is somewhere you could do that. Otherwise, you can definitely move around the notes and how they're positioned by playing with this. You just set the different grids here, apply a different amount. You can mess with these a little bit and you can adjust the note from the start or the end. Not sure how often I'll be using that one, but it's great that they added it as well. And what's really cool about these effects, guys, is that they can be combined together to make even crazier results. So you don't just use one tab and then you stop. Maybe we go ahead and we make some crazy shit with one of these other ones. Maybe we get some ornaments at the beginning. Maybe we have some arpeggiated notes. And then at the end, maybe we need to quantize everything a little bit because it fell off the grid in some certain areas. That would be a good use case for this. I'm gonna show you a really nice combination at the end of this video. If you guys wanna upgrade your sound selection, we're running a quick 50% off sale on all of our drum kits and our production suite. And that has four drum kits three advanced production master classes, three top collections, and a bunch of mixer racks for less than 30 bucks. However, this is going to be ending on Friday, February 23rd at midnight. So if you're interested, go now. Just use the code ABLETON12 in all caps, and we're going to have links in the description below. Let's jump over to recombine, and this allows you to specify different ranges for a group of notes that you have highlighted. So if I want to highlight just this group of notes and affect them in certain ways, this is how you would do that. So you you can affect the pitch length and velocity or you can turn off certain ones if you want to do that as well so let's keep them all on so all of them are being affected and we we'll even have our velocity lane open right here so this allows you to rotate the notes and you can either drag right here or you can drag from this point right here as well but you can see we can add different steps and it's going to go ahead and rotate these notes in different positions depending on which one you select here we can also mirror the notes so it's going to do the exact opposite right it's going to mirror it to the side let's check this out you can also shuffle them, which is going to apply some random shuffling. I think it would make more sense if this shuffle was a button and not just something that you enable or disable so that you could shuffle it a bunch of different times and get different variations. But I guess if you're rotating it back and forth anyways, you'll probably get something similar by doing it that way. Let's jump into span. This is going to be used to adjust the length of your MIDI notes. So let's go ahead and select some of our notes here. So we have Tenuto, which is going to preserve the original note end times. Then you can use these right here to offset and variate them. Otherwise, Otherwise, we have Legato, which is going to immediately extend all the notes when we click it. Let's go back to Tenuto. And then we also have Staccato. It's going to shorten them to the smallest half distance. So half of what the grid was set to. And then we have our offset and variation knob for all of these. So we can go ahead and apply some variation to the lengthening. And we also have our offset here. No Cardi B. Hold your laughter. I know. And now for the most controversial one of all. That's 
going to be strum. And it's very controversial because I made a video on an M4L device that you can download to this day for free that gives you really nice strumming parameters. But it's cool that Ableton's finally adding something because up until this point, there's been nothing besides manual strumming. So let's go ahead and select these notes. This is going to work best for chords, right? Because we're strumming. So we have a low and a high point here. And this is kind of similar to Ableton's built-in ramp feature. And that when you just go ahead and move this, you're moving the different points from where the strumming is going to start. And this tension point right here is going to allow us to give us some sort of a curve. Now, this is pretty cool and all, but if you've noticed, we started on this point. So it just went ahead and strummed our notes, but now everything is off the grid. So now I would have to take this and then move it on the grid because we wouldn't want our note to start there just because we added a strum. So I thought that was really weird that they didn't add anything to fix that. This might be where you'd want to go to quantize. Let's try it out. Okay, so with quantize, we have it on one eighth starting. If we go to one fourth, yeah, it's going to bring this note off two hours later yeah and none of these really have a good way to go ahead and offset that there's not really a way to do that so that's kind of sucky ableton you guys got to get on that because this m4l device i'm about to show you guys whoops it so this m4l device is called sculptor and it's 100 percent free so all you're going to do is click this sculpting tools button right here and then you're going to want to set a zoom size dependent on how big your screen real estate is so let's click in here and you can see it's going to stay on the screen so actually let's go back i want to change the size but now we can see both views in ableton 12 so i don't don't have to go between them that's pretty cool okay 75 looks pretty similar to what we have right there and if we go ahead and select our midi notes here and we go to the strum setting we can go ahead and apply strum just like this so this is how they decided to do it So as you can see, it does the same thing that Ableton does by default, but we have different modes right here. So if we click this mode right here, so it's going to start from the first point and work its way backwards. Now, if we go ahead and do this, there we go. And it stays on point right there. It doesn't move it forward or anything like that. This even has edge behaviors. If it reaches the edge, you can have it behave in different ways. So look at how much more customizable this is. And this is just strum. Look at how many there are. And there's three different tabs. So if you guys are interested in this, I'm going to leave a link to the full video. Like I said, this is a free M4L device and it's whooping what Ableton has even in 12. And you don't have to have Ableton 12 to use this. But nevertheless, I'm glad they added something because you always have to start somewhere and they can always add on to this in the future this time warp is a little confusing to me and i'm not totally sure where i would ever use this but regardless it's cool to have because it helps you visualize and think of things in different ways so let me just throw a couple random notes in here time warp allows you to set one to three different points here so we can set these different points and as you can see we can drag them up or down moving the time and the speed value right here and as you can see with the notes they're kind of stretching and they're moving around based off the time settings that you're giving it now you can put quantize on, but that's going to limit you greatly unless your grid is very, very small. But hey, if you want to make sure that it's on the grid when you're doing this, that would be a way to do it. You can also have it fit to the range. So the selection that we gave it, or we can go outside of that range as well. You can see it immediately just boomed out. And then we can also choose to include the note ends or not. So if we turn this off, you can see they're going to extend past that range and they're going to be the same length that they were before we started applying all these effects. There are some ways that you could use this to enhance some of the other effects. Check this out. So let's go back to the strum feature that is decent at best but we're going to go ahead and apply some strum. Let's just go ahead and apply what we have here. So now if we go back to time warp, it's going to give us a little more control over that strumming. Check this out. Look at this. We can get a little more control over the strumming that wasn't exactly available any other way. And the next one is Velocity Shaper, but this one's for Max for Live. I'm not sure why they made this the only one that requires Max for Live, but it does. So if you don't have Sweet, there's a chance that you're not going to be able to use this unless they change how that works in the future. But regardless, this is just going to give you an advanced control over your velocity. I was pretty happy with the ramping and everything. But if you want to get actually crazy with this, like mental, this is your weapon of choice right here, fam. So look at this. Look at the velocities down here. So as we change this, it's going to actually mimic this graph, which is absolutely crazy to me. And when I've started playing with this, I noticed that you can put as many points as you want. I've never reached a limit here. So I'm sure there is some sort of a limit, but damn, you can put a lot in here. So if you want to get absolutely alligator happy with this, go ahead, man. That's yours. So looping is going to change the velocities from left to right, 
whereas rotate is going to change them from top to bottom. It's just going to go in between all the different ones that already exist. And you can pick the divisions in which it's looped as well. And the possibilities with this are literally endless because they have a max for live section, which is going to give some developers an easy way to hook up different functionality to these transformation tools so these are ableton 12's new transformation tools but if you want to see every new feature in ableton 12's piano roll you're going to need to check out this video next